Hey everyone, it's Connor here, and welcome back to another very interesting video. And it's a video where I'm using a new endoscope camera, which I'll talk about in a moment. But um, if you like the look of this footage, let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'd be really interested to get your thoughts. But uh, what we have here is a gentleman who is in a lot of pain, and he's been in quite a bit of pain for a while. He went to his local doctor. The doctor, as a precaution, prescribed some antibiotics, but that hasn't helped. So uh, the doctor has advised that he, he see me for some clearance, which is obviously needed. And what's in the ear is basically a, a hairball, really. It's, it's a very fine, dense matrix of hair and wax and dead skin. And we've dealt with these before on the, on the channel. We, I've seen a couple of cases before like this. It doesn't usually cause that much pain, um, but this patient is, is, is in quite a bit of distress. And... Um, the, uh, when the procedure is done, you'll see what everything looks like. It, the ear doesn't look too bad. There's just a little bit of ulceration of the skin, which was probably causing him a bit of jip. But um, I thought this would be a really good case to test out the camera. Now, maybe you've noticed, maybe you haven't. But the last, I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 videos, the quality hasn't been quite what it was of the old videos. So my, uh, the, the camera that I was using for ages broke, basically. And that was the camera I was using to record in 4K at 60 frames a second, which is my preference. So I had to use my backup camera. And the backup camera, which I've been using recently, uh, can record in 4K, but only at 30 frames a second. Um, and if you want 60 frames a second, then you have to drop down to standard resolution, uh, standard high def resolution, which is 1080p. And uh, so some of the previous 20 or 30 videos. Some are in 4K at a low frame rate, some are in standard HD at a high frame rate, and uh, that was kind of annoying for me. And I actually prefer, to be honest, I preferred the look of the higher frame rate, even though it was in a lower resolution. And, you know, what I've discovered over time by using different cameras and things like that, is that the frame rate of, your, of the endoscope camera makes a huge difference to the overall image quality. So, you know, the resolution plays a part. Obviously, it's better to film through an endoscope in a high resolution, like 4K, rather than 1080p. The resolution helps. But the actual quality of the image, so the contrast and the light and what you can see, is massively affected by the frame rate. And also just, you know, performing the procedure in 60 frames a second, you know, just looks nicer. You know, it looks more akin to real life than doing it in 30 frames a second. And it's also looks nicer as well when you're reviewing the footage. So anyway, after much kind of faffing, um, I've got a new camera attached to the endoscope. This is what you're seeing here. Hopefully you like it. I think it looks a little bit better now that we're, we're seeing, you know, we're back to the sort of normality now, the deliciousness of 4K at 60 frames a second. So um, now what we're doing here, see this kind of this core, as I'm kind of manipulating it, this is where the patient started to get a little uncomfortable. So up until now, he, you know, procedure has been fine and there's no pain. He's finding this a little bit, um, a little bit uncomfortable, shall we say. Um, so I'm just trying to get this kind of final boulder out here. And, you know, normally these hairball cases are actually really difficult because the hair kind of acts like wire, right? Just like wire in concrete. And it gives the whole structure a lot of strength and resilience. So it's very, very difficult. This is quite a, a good example. Of, you know, it's, it's quite an easy case. Now you can just see the ulceration on the right hand side. Did you catch that? Um, olive oil in here. I actually, in, in, in reality, I let this olive oil sit for about 15 minutes. So uh, I, you know, I applied the olive oil, sucked some cotton wool in, told the patient to, uh, to wait in the waiting area for 15 minutes. Um, partly because I was running behind you know, this procedure was taking a long t has, had overrun significantly. So um, I got him to wait in the, the waiting area whilst I dealt with another patient. But also it was just nice to let it sit there for a while just to soften up. Yes. And now this kind of final crust, which was overlaying the eardrum I've brought forwards. So there we go, dropped it, but recovered it. There we go. And uh, so this is, you can now clearly see the eardrum back there. See that little bit of ulceration on the right hand side, that pink little pink area? I'm saying ulceration, I mean, you know, that's quite an extreme word, but, you know, I was, the, the term ulceration just means like discontinuity of the skin. So, um, you know, that's probably a little bit of bleeding underneath the skin, maybe. 
Um, but the eardrum is there, lovely bluish gray color. You know, overall, compared to some of the cases that I've seen, the ear canal actually looks pretty good. You know, there's no obvious swelling, which is edema, right? Um, which is pooling of fluid in the tissue. It's just a little bit of inflammation, maybe, but, um, you know, this, this little last piece here, which I'm pursuing, normally I wouldn't bother with that, but it's just the position of it, which is, you know, I thought I might as well investigate. So whenever you see kind of pale whitish debris or brown debris above the eardrum, which is what we call the attic region, usually suspicions are always raised because that's a sign, sometimes a sign of cholesteatoma, or some people call that atticoantral disease. Um, so there's the be before shot, ear absolutely clogged full of debris, and uh, there's the after shot. So there we go. Um, the amount of pain, I suspect, probably um, was just due to the, the sheer, you know, outward pressure of the plug on the ear canal, which would have got worse as the patient used the drops, um, you know, making the plug swell and making it enlarge. So there we go. Uh, I hope you found this case interesting. Um, let me know what you think about um, the, the, the quality of the image. And if you have any questions about what you've seen, leave them down in the comment section below. And I will try my very best to get back to you. And of course, I will see you guys on the next video.